Number 11, uh, determine each of these features. So what I would start off with is I would start with by factoring. X minus two, there's nothing I can do with that, but I can zoom in a little bit. I can, I can find what number multiplies to two but adds to negative three. Multiply the two and add to negative three, that'd be negative two and negative one. And like I said before, normally you will see this number again. Um, so that's one way I help myself factor. So this equals see the top we just said factors into x minus 2 x minus 1 and in the denominator I have x minus 2 so we'll start off and we are going to eliminate common factors so those eliminate and I get just But this equals ah but this equals x minus one. So remember when they cancel, that's when we get a hole. So because those two cancel, we have a hole. Um, the hole is at what number minus 2 is 0? That would be 2. So I have a hole at 2. And remember, in order to find out where that hole is, you plug back into the original function. I'm sorry, not the original. You plug into the simplified function. And so I'm going to plug 2 in here. 2 minus 1 is 1. So I know my hole is at 2, 1. If I go to my graph here, you'll see I have a hole at 2, 1. Now you may be, may be wondering, why does this make a straight line? It makes a straight line because, remember, x minus 1 is a straight line. So I took into account my hole. My hole, um, um, simplified, goes away. And then vertical asymptote, there's no other term down here. So I'm actually going to say that there's no vertical asymptote. Now looking at the degree, remember whenever this degree, which is 2 and that's 1, when this is bigger than that, when the degree here is bigger than this degree, like we said above in our notes, Zoomed in too far. A little bit higher. So when the degree here is bigger than the degree there, there's no horizontal asymptote. So I go down here and I would also say no horizontal asymptote. X-intercept, we can see is right there. How do we get the x-intercept? So how do we find that x-intercept? Remember, we take our, orig our uh, function that we simplified, and we set that equal to 0. When does x minus 1 equal 0? That's when x equals 1. And notice that's what our x-intercept is. And then to find our y-intercept, we set this oops, I did that wrong. Uh, to find the x-intercept, we set that equal to 0. Oh, so x is 1. And then to find our y-intercept, we plug 0 in. And so what is 0 minus 1? 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 
So my y-intercept is at 0, negative 1, which is right here. And that would be it on this problem. Let's go ahead and look at this one. Now what factor? 4x minus 16 factors into 4. x minus 4 has a GCF of 4. And then how does this factor? I guarantee it's going to have an x minus 4 in there, most likely. But what multiplies to negative 12? but adds to negative 1. And it is negative 4 and 3. So this becomes x minus 4, x plus 3. I'm going to make my fraction bar a little longer and add in an equals, because they are equal. Now from here, I'm going to divide out my common factors. Remember, that makes a whole at 4 something. So I'm going to remember that that's going to make a whole, but this, this makes 4 over x plus 3. All right, so let's talk about the whole first. There's a whole at four. So I know there's a whole at four. And so looking at my graph, I can see there's a whole at four something. Uh, it's not one, but it's less than one, maybe two thirds, maybe a half. It's really hard to see by the graph. So the way I find that is I plug it back in. So instead of X, I'm gonna put a four in there. I'm plugging back in, and 4 divided by 4 plus 3, that would be 4 sevenths. And 4 sevenths is almost a half. Um, actually, it's a little bit more than a half. And so that does, that does look like uh, 4 sevenths to me. So my whole is at 4, 4 sevenths. My vertical asymptote. That would come from this part right here. What number plus 3 is 0? That would be negative 3. So my vertical asymptote is at negative 3, which we could confirm by the graph. See, negative 3 right there. Vertical asymptote. Horizontal. Horizontal. Remember, I, I compared the degrees. The degree here is 1. degree here is 2. So when this is smaller than that, what do we do? We talked about it. Sorry, I always forget what page it's on. Degrees bigger. Degrees the same. When that's less than that, then we always have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So now I know my horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. And if you think about it, if you have a horizontal asymptote, then that means you will never have an x-intercept. If the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0, you will never have an x-intercept. So there's no x-intercept. You confirm that looking at this graph. It'll never cross. Now here, the y-intercept. The y-intercept, remember, to find the y-intercept, that's when x is 0. So when x is 0, I'm going to plug, instead of 4 in, I'm going to plug in 0. And 0 plus 3 is now 3. So to be a y-intercept, that means x is 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. So that's going to be 4 thirds. 
So I would go down here, that's four thirds. Remember four thirds is one and a third, that's 1.33333. Looking at my y-intercept, there we go, four thirds, one and about a third up. So I have completed this, I can confirm it through my graph, and we are complete.